Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. At least I'll die with my cock intact. Uh, I'm Brendan, here with Luke. Hi. And Jonathan. That's me. And today we're talking about The Handmaiden. Um, so we'll just go around as usual, Luke, Gordon Sweet. What did you think about this movie? It was a movie. It was, uh... I didn't, you know have a problem with it, but it wasn't my favorite, uh, wasn't my favorite Chainwook Park movie, I suppose you'd say. Okay. Jonathan? Pretty horny, isn't it? <laughs> it was pretty horny. Yeah, it was, it was, it was all right. Uh, I liked this movie. I, th- I thought it was good. Hmm. Uh, there, there are things that I didn't like love about it, but they're, yeah, it was overall it, it was, was good. It was an original movie. I definitely didn't I don't know. I, I thought it was it was okay. Well, it's not an original movie, it's based on a British book, but Well, that makes it original. <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was like it, overall it was good. Like it, it definitely leaned towards good more than bad. Uh, normally Luke jumps into it. Should I jump into it this week? <laughs> whoever can jump into it as they wish. Sure. Uh at the beginning of this movie, I was like not really on board. I was very bored. Like I thought it was like well, I thought it was well shot and like every there was nothing wrong with it, but I wasn't like invested. And then the halfway point hit, and then I was like, oh, okay, yeah, no, like I'm into it. Um, but yeah, that that was like my my overall feelings. Interesting. I thought the halfway point was weaker really okay yeah when when so when part two started and it went back uh, i cared less at the start of part two uh in, until like the later end of part two i was kind of having a brain fart moment when i watched part the beginning of part two because i was like wait is she actually the uh she actually oh you know, yeah so that's one thing i would have loved if she was actually the the lady the hitiko lady. yeah that would have been great. Well, that was one of the reasons why I was invested in part two was because I didn't know if she was actually Lady Hiko or if she was, uh, or if like it was actually that, crazy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or I didn't, awful. or if she was uh, like you know being played the whole time. Either way, it went great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I do also like the way that they went, where it was sort of neither. Like she wasn't being played the whole time. Yeah. But uh, she was being played part of the time. And seeing the change was like it was it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, like like I said, this isn't like my favorite movie by any stretch of the word. But uh, during the second half, I was def- it definitely had my attention. Mm-hmm. I I liked that it was a different movie uh, based on the character's perspective you were considering. Absolutely. But like for the count, it's a heist movie, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, if if this movie went linear linearly, it would have been mediocre. Oh, I mean, of course. But because they split it up into each part was you know different characters. Yeah, I mean, like the first half of part two, if that had happened at the start of the movie and you knew exactly what was happening, it would have been terrible. Yeah. yeah. I also thought the count's character was very interesting because at the beginning, I I. I hated him, but in the sense of like, I didn't genuinely hate him. I was just like, oh, he's somebody who you're supposed to think is a dick. And then I was like, during his part, I was like, oh, I kind of like, he seems like he's maybe not terrible. And then you're like, oh, never mind. He's a piece of shit again. Like, he's yeah. fully awful all the way. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was interesting. Um, I, I mean, I think all the characters sucked as people. Yeah. Um, I don't disagree with that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it, it was a, it was an interesting movie. Um, rest in peace, all those books though. They destroyed yeah. them. Very sad. Yeah, they were beautiful. Erotic, they were kind of smut though. I mean, well, they were kind of smut, but I mean, they're they still were books. Smut, but at the same time, I think you know that's something that we're missing in in history. It's some historical smut. It was a little bit of smut. Of it. And yeah, it was lost uh, here during the Handmaid. One thing I will say on that like note 
is that the handmaiden was a very like anti i don't know like the things that it was against obviously like it's hard to be against like it was pretty fucked up what the uncle was doing Mm -hmm. um yeah but at the same time it seemed to have like an anti-horny overtone while also being very horny in itself i think and that's in the books as well but that's more of like she's anti being forced to be you know this you're not allowed to be straight horny yeah i mean she she wasn't straight so there was that like neither character was straight so it's kind of like yeah they wouldn't like doing that no like i totally like i agree that all the things that were bad were bad i just think that it undersold its point by also like you the movie didn't have to show you so explicitly like it could have it it could have implied but it showed you very explicitly which i think in itself undermined a lot of the uh it to me it took away a lot of its impact of the message it was trying to to share which is that like you know uh you can't basically it's like a message of consent and you know you can't take you you can't force love you can't force sex is like i don't think it big... does necessarily take away the message if anything i think it makes it stronger and it's this th- there's mm-hmm. like this archaic idea that like consent means or not even consent but like oh because they're sexual why weren't they like no that they didn't want to be sexual with those people i totally agree with that yeah. i'm just i just think that like not ultimately that they weren't sexual people yeah 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 maybe maybe i was looking at it the wrong way but what i kind of took away it was just like hey like this is bad but then at the same times it was like also sort of leaning into the same thing that it was like trying to say is kind of shitty because it really leaned into the the horny side of things yeah but the movie was never saying horny was bad it kind of was i don't think so Mm. No, I mean, it was more like, A, this dude's a fucking creep. All of his books that, like, I don't know, it's kind of sold as if, like, he's the greatest book collector of our time. And you find out, like, all he collects is porn. Yeah. And he has his, uh, he has his niece read the porn to, like, a horny, like, collective. Again, I think agree that all the things that the movie is trying to say is fucked up is fucked up i totally agree i just think it kind of undercuts it a little no because that was them getting their horny on by choice like did did essentially did suki really have much of a choice i I would argue that she was eventually she did but she was also the handmaiden like she didn't have any yeah but she was like she was into it <laughs> like she was yeah and she was also... into it but i do feel like if she wasn't that nothing would have changed no i mean the i mean yes so that if if she wasn't then yes what you're saying would be true and it would be a problem because then hitiko would be doing exactly what had happened to her but that i mean that isn't what happened in the movie yeah but, and not uh... only that but like you can't say it was undercut by something that didn't happen that could have happened I don't know, I just didn't think that. And it would... also, I think Act Three would have played out differently. Like, for example, when when Suki, uh, specifically, like told, I think that that obviously you like someone when you tell them, like in that situation, like, yeah, we were gonna set you up, but like if if she wasn't into her, she might have just saved her life. again i'm not i'm not saying that she wasn't like it's very clear that the movie like she was definitely into it i'm just saying that um the way that things went out it wasn't so the whole message is about like consent almost like it's like hey you can't do this to people who don't want it but then when everything kind of went down there wasn't like a hey are you into this are you okay with this it was just like do this to me (laughs) it was like oh okay but i mean they they already knew that they were into each other from previous interactions mm. they had I mean, been they, they had been getting the horny like, on as as they met. Yeah. i i think that it, i think that it was hinted and that it wasn't explicit and i think that it undercuts it a little only a little 
Do you think it was hinted when when she was filing down? Uh, I mean, yeah, it wasn't Lady ever Hita said. Gross. It wasn't ever said. I don't. I think there is a matter of like, a lot of people will be like, "All right, well, you can't like." And I'm not saying I'm one of them, but like, there are people who are like, "Oh no, she wanted it," but like, in that particular case, like, you could just see. But Both I don't think that I don't think that you can wanted each other just because you get the feeling and obviously in this movie that was the case and again I'm not saying that it completely ruined the movie for me I'm just saying it undercut it a little bit the fact that it was never like explicit when this whole movie sort of relies on that sort of thing I think it it undermines the message but how are you going to be explicit in the 30s in a, in a society that does not really respect. Well, this isn't a true story. Yeah, but but it's based in the 30s. Also, like, Hideko makes it pretty clear as well. Like, when, when they're talking about marrying the Count, she's like, well, what if I said I was in love with someone else? Well, that's later. That's after the whole thing. Is it? Yes. It's after their first time yes. together. Yes. Mm-hmm. But, and uh, I just I, I want to put this out there here again. I'm not saying it ruins the whole movie. I'm just I think it uh, undersells a little. Well, I think all the characters are pretty cool. Like it's their own. Like not in like a hey they're really likable, but like they're all fun to see what they're doing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, again, all shitty people. But. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody is like a good moral person in this. But that almost makes it more fun. Yeah, I don't like movies where. Well, all right, I. Because again, this is a this is a heist movie. Like, they aren't going to be moral characters. Yeah, I like movies where they are, they're likable. But you know, where it's not so black and white. Where it's not like this character is likable, this character is not. Like, yeah, I actually think that the count was one of the coolest in that regard because he goes from being like a complete, like almost laughable, like arc villain to a oh like he's just he's just like a robin hood to then a no no he's he's a huge piece of shit Hmm. i actually thought for a long time in the movie the uncle was dead because he just like wasn't around well you saw him with with the snake when the snake thing happened right but that was the past wasn't it Mm, because that was the that was the aunt wasn't it no that was that was suki Oh, you're right. She has a snake scene too. Right. Yeah. yeah, I guess I forgot about that. Yeah. Because then, because then he's just gone for a long time. He is. He's, he like he gets mentioned, but like he's not there. And then it's funny when he leaves because it's like, where were you? Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh. yeah. I don't know. Overall, I I, I liked the movie a lot. Um, I. Again, I didn't care so much about um, Hideko and the Count hatching their heist, like when it just cuts to that. Um, got a bit bored there. I was like, "Yeah, yeah that's I feel like, like the beginning of the movie is definitely the like the fact that she turned her in made that clear that that's what happened. Like, like the ending of part one made it clear that Hideko was working with the Count, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't need to see half an hour of that. Yeah, I feel like the movie was a little bit too long. It could have probably been shaved like 15, 20 minutes. I do. I don't mind. Um, I appreciated seeing how it became a thing, but I do agree that it was very long. Like showing uh, her in the reading and then like how they met wasn't mm-hmm. really necessary. I think it could have picked I up. I feel like the reading was kind of important though to a certain extent because you find out what she's doing. Like, I It is important in other ways, but it... Yeah, you know what? Actually, you, you've kind of changed my mind just by saying that, just because it was important for that reason. Like, yeah, I it was. I just wanted to get into the scene where he like is with her and there, and he's like, "Hey, let me marry you so that I can take your money and then you can be free." Mm. That's like I wanted to get to that point faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought it was interesting that that was the uh, arrangement too. Like, I'm gonna take you know a portion of your money 
It is also interesting, though, that the uh, whole getting Suki as a handmaiden was actually Hidekio's idea, and it wasn't the Count's idea. <laughs> yeah, she, but, she uh, wanted to be truly free, so she needed someone to be her. Right, yeah, but I, just, saw... I thought it was funny, because by the end of the movie, they're like, yeah, fuck the Count, but I'm like, it was kind of her idea. Yeah, that's what I mean by everyone sucks, like... Yeah. Hideko is also a villain for like the first half of the movie. Like she is pretending to be this meek um countess or whatever her title is. So Uncle yeah. Kozuki, right? Uh as you see later, he is basically looking for her in Japan to like kill you know Suki and bring back uh Lady Hideko like that that's kind of what happens in the third act and they you know obviously they they dress up uh hidako as um as a man to escape but yeah um i don't think if if they would have done it the way you know the count initially offered i don't think it would have worked So I think it was kind of essential for the plan. I just think it ended up like, hey, Suki is pretty. Cool. I mean, it might have worked. Like, <laughs> it might have worked because uh, she would have been in the, the nut house. They might have tried to go to the nut house to find her, but by then they would have been long gone. I imagine. Yeah. They could have moved anywhere, but I also did really like the historical. Uh, aspect of this movie like what what the time period was and the relationships between you know korean peoples and japanese peoples what was happening in the 30s mm -hmm. which was very much like not quite genocide but like pretty fucking bad yeah and i think they they didn't touch on it as much as i would have hoped they would have where it was just kind of like a few things they they talk about here and there i did think it was interesting that they they brought up in the beginning of the movie in the subtitles that like this is going like yellow text is japanese and purple text is in korean or yeah and i thought it was a really interesting like idea i wish more movies would just like go more ham and like the like nope they're gonna be you know, there's going to be multiple different languages in this movie instead of like kind of what they yeah. do in American movies where it's just like an accent. It's the French guy. Uh -huh. What yeah. are you doing? Like, <laughs> okay. Where in this movie, they just, nope, we're switching up the languages for this portion. I also really appreciated how uh, tight the plot was all around. Like there weren't too many... Like after the twist, normally not I wouldn't I shouldn't say normally, but a lot of the times when people try to go for a big twist, there are huge like gaping plot holes in uh, you know, the way things were perceived before. Uh, but I think this movie was like pretty close. Like everything made sense after you found out and before you found out. Well, I think that's because they literally on. told you like what happened. <laughs> they literally showed you what happened before and after so that it made sense it yeah and like i mean you movie. literally see the same scenes again from different perspectives as well. yeah i enjoyed that did you not no no i, I do i thought it just I lended it itself to movie. making like if, it if closed yeah. if you just had the movie as one linear thing like i said earlier i think that would make the movie like a pretty boring like six out of ten five out of ten experience like i'd be like mm. but one i feel like spoilers on his rating dude hmm? spoilers on your rating dude <laughs> no but that's what i would have given it had not i know like, but now you've told us now we have a minimum now <laughs> oh one kind of uh funny thing is i actually think this movie is enhanced by not knowing japanese or korean a little bit just because uh you would be able to catch on to the fact that she is setting her up oh yeah if you could read the letter wait did they show you did they did they show you the letter in full in the first scene they i think she Oh, she shows you her, her name. She's like, this is your name. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. If you could read it and you're like, what? That's 
the other person's name, then you would instantly be tipped off right. as to what's going on. I was thinking of the letter, which I don't think you see, but you're right. You mm. do see her name. I think they just briefly show it for just a second, though. It is just a second, but if you catch it, I think that that. I mean, you can also pause, <laughs> like you can. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I think in the movie theater you wouldn't be able to read that fast. Yeah. Maybe okay. some people read it like 2000, you know. It doesn't ruin the movie. I just, it's an interesting thing that I make, think yeah. makes it yeah. a little bit better. Did they show it though in the original? They did show the name for sure. I don't know if you saw the letter. I'm pretty sure you didn't see the letter. Yeah, I, you did see the name though. Or you know what they could do is they could just have another letter that's like a bunch of symbols. <laughs> like. <laughs> Because she can't read, right? Yeah. And how would we know? Like, sure. We certainly can't read uh, Korean. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we've talked a lot about the plot. I, I want to say the cinematography in this movie was great. I agree. The sets were yeah. also amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a very visually stunning movie. A lot of color. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well lit. I thought I thought there was gonna be something after a lot of color. What? I thought you were gonna just drag ten in again. <laughs> I mean, now that you bring it up. Um, yeah. What do you guys have to offer the worst movie than that? Open water. No, I don't. I guess if you really want to, if that's your choice, we will watch it. I don't want to watch Open Water again, but maybe at some point. Yeah. I feel like I'm wrong about Open Water, though, because it's been so many years since I've seen it. Maybe you'll be like, wow, it was actually a I No, I, still, I, don't, I don't think I'll think it's good, but I <laughs> think I'll be like, this is better. Where you thought, like, this was not good, and then you went back and watched it and thought it was really good. Like, not just like, oh, this is a lot better than I remember, but, like, it went mm -hmm. from, like, four to, like, eight plus. Oh, no, I don't think so. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. There's but definitely been movies I went back like as an adult and like realized like the significance of what was happening. Yeah. But like yeah. there's there's never been a, like a I hate this movie and now I love this movie. Yeah, I've only ever done the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's because you got smarter though, you know. Yeah. Like I liked Jurassic Park The Lost World as a kid. Me too. You know, and here's the thing. Well, let's be honest. It's still not that bad. Like no, but track. like it's so much worse than the other. Yeah. Well, do you think it's worse than what? three? Yeah, I like three better than one. You don't? Really? Oof. No, I felt like three makes me sad. I like three. Anyway, that's not, that's not germane to the handmaiden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely not. <laughs> neither here nor there, but like... Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, do you want to bring up uh, the history of this movie? The history? Yeah. It's just that it was a book, a British book. Yep. So, yeah, it's interesting. This is like the reverse of what normally happens. This is this was adapted from a British book rather than being a Western adaptation of Korean. Yeah, it was an Eastern adaptation of something from the West. Yeah. Which was definitely interesting. Because in the original <laughs> it's book... It's also kind of funny because it's an eastern adaptation of something from the west about an eastern plot i don't no, know if it was, it was in the a book western plot. yeah it was originally about like a lord in uh oh Wales. yeah never mind i just sound like an idiot then <laughs> yeah it was a so, whole oh, adaptation that's so cool i love that and the original director is like a you know she makes specifically like lesbian uh thrillers and like uh love stories etc and very sexual. In a lot of yeah, the, the original book was called Fingersmith. All right. <laughs> Which is a play not on only the thievery that the main character has, but also, of course, the, uh, the sexual on aspect. The novel is also in uh, three parts. Yep. But similarly. So, so the, 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 is the first book on... Suki, and then the second book is on. Well, I think their original names are like Mary, uh, Sue Trinder, uh, Maud Lily, yeah, there you go, Richard Gentleman Rivers. Yep, hmm. and there it is. But it's like a true Western to Eastern adaptation, and I 
I like it, you know. I wonder if this book is any good. It, uh, I think it's it's like her most well known book. I think maybe I'll read it at some point. If if I had enough time before the podcast, I would have considered reading uh, the book. Like, because I didn't find out about it until I started watching the movie. Mm-hmm. And I suppose I said the wrong thing. She's she's not English. She's Welsh. So the the writer. So they care. Not that anyone's like watching who would care, but yeah. Not that anyone's watching. <laughs> yeah, you could have there's certainly hey, listen there's there there may be one person from the united states who's listening to this I well nobody's know. watching because it's just a black box there you go <laughs> that makes sense i don't know maybe i'll read this book at some point I, I i do find it interesting to read like the original material um just to see what changed like i, I kind of want to read uh all you need is kill or whatever it's called after watching edge of tomorrow it does always uh i think the better way is to watch the movie before reading the book because if you read yeah. the book before it is usually disappointing right and if it and if it isn't disappointing it's uh it's only not disappointing in some ways but it, it's actually interesting because uh when she had uh had wrote fingersmith she actually did an interview for this movie like just talking about the adaptation and she uh she talked about how she thought they were a little too like the the women were a little too perfect Mm. like for being in the 30s there should be a little bit more you know like body hair etc oh Um, yeah but um she talked about how she couldn't write fingersmith today because like her mind was just in a different place like more active which i thought was was wild i don't even know what that means say that. like she was like this is more of a crime <clears throat> like thriller right yeah with like oh well what if this happens like what if we reveal this later where mm-hmm. like that's supposedly not something that she does uh oh, okay any longer but there's actually also a movie uh, I don't know if it's a BBC movie, but it, it's a it's an English movie called Fingersmith. Hmm. Um, so if you do want to watch instead of read, I mean, it, it literally exists. Like, <laughs> it's a three hour movie. Actually, it's a three hour uh, TV show. Sorry, oh, okay. mini miniseries. So, yeah, it exists. Interesting. I I doubt it's as sexual because it's a TV miniseries. Yeah, I mean, it's also Britain as opposed to Korea. Yeah. But, I mean, really, the United States is where it's the most prudish, so. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's how I feel. But, yeah, apparently a lot of her her movies have been... uh, or sorry, a lot of her books have been converted into movies. Interesting. I hadn't heard of her before. Um, before this. Yeah, there, but I also don't very... read a lot of crime novels. So there's a. <laughs> she has one called Prejudice and Pride. <laughs> I mean, you gotta <laughs> love that. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, Hmm. Yeah, I, I think I'm ready for the review for the for the. Numbers. We're done. We're only at uh 28 minutes. I mean, it, it's sad because we we all kind of have a very. I feel like we're all going to have a very tight score range. Yeah, probably. I like. Yeah, we all like this movie, but there's not like. I don't love this movie. But yeah, I do. I did enjoy this movie. You did mention that it's not your favorite of of his. What uh, what others have you seen that you preferred? Oh, old boy. Uh, I figured. Yeah, I figured the answer was going to be old like, boy. <laughs> old boy is just so good. He's also he's credited with producing Snowpiercer. Um, no, I, I, I don't remember him. Director, in, isn't no, 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 no. Uh, 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 what's his name? Oh yeah, he's the Bong, Bong Joon Ho is the is the director. Yeah, yeah. Of so Snowpiercer. he's the he's the producer on both of them. Yeah. So interesting. Those are both very good, but I mean, he also like he's you know he's not the person who created those. 
So that's actually one of the reasons why I chose this is because it kind of goes in with like not only my own music history or music, but movie history, but also like Snowpiercer. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like it was a good, a good pick. But I also, I just loved Old Boy and I wanted to watch this movie. Like, yeah. I haven't seen Old so, Boy in a long time. So one thing I noticed in this movie, uh, I wanted to get your guys' opinion on. Did anybody else think Suki was an awful liar until or, until it mattered? Um, so I think that was the point. I mean, she she's meant to be like... They picked her because she's a bad liar. Right? Oh yeah, are you talking about when she laughs? Yeah, like yeah. I mean, there's that, and then there's also like she she stumbles over her words, and she basically almost says like I'm setting you up like all the time, but then the moment that like she's being framed as being, um, you know, Hidekio, like she she just becomes an expert liar all of a sudden. I don't know. That was one tiny thing as well that made me. Where like, where's that exactly in the plot? So when when she's at the like the insane asy- asylum and they're like, oh okay, well, you know, let's let's go, Miss Sasaki. Uh, it's time. And she's like, no, 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 no. I'm the handmaiden. Like, and then she just becomes like an expert liar all of a sudden. Well, she had to be, but also you 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 got to know that. Uh, how long had they had this plot to basically like? frame her between the two of them between lady hiko and suki sure but i mean i'm just saying that like she just went from being a terrible liar to a very excellent one where when when does suki lie during the asylum she she's upset right yeah she has to because... she has to she has to pretend that she doesn't know that she's being set up um but i think at that point in the movie you don't really know right oh oh i see what you're saying i see what you're saying okay and um, I just think that she did a very good job. It's interesting it. because um, some of the reviews for this movie mention that they think the actor who played Suki, uh, they think is the weakest point of the movie. Yeah, so, I, I, so I don't see the earlier stuff as her being a bad liar so much. It was her playing a character of like, you know, this like ditzy, affable handmaiden to sort of like endear herself to Hidako. Maybe. Yeah. She was trying really hard to and also that's a thing like a lot of people do when they like like someone is they'll like laugh extra hard. And I, the I laughing the good. laughing stuck out to me as odd, but I don't think it was like I, I don't think it was like an issue with her being a bad liar or anything. Yeah, I just I just think uh It it was just one thing that stuck out to it's me. It's just a it's an actually yep. interesting eccentricity of her of her laugh yeah you can't control what your laugh is right it wasn't I mean, the laugh particular like the the plot almost had it so that she was a terrible liar like there was very there were so many times where she would like say like she called uh the guy the count instead of uh his fake name she said uh oh he thinks about your assets instead of your face mm-hmm so there was just it was like very intentional that she was a bad liar, and then she became a very good liar when it mattered. I don't know <laughs> when when they said like this is your name, and she's like yes. Like at that point, she wasn't like really it wasn't like a really bad lie either, you know. But at that point, she would have known that you know that wasn't her name, and she was being set up. No, that was when they first meet. Oh no no no! I'm talking about when she is at the asylum and they're like, "Oh yeah, you yeah, signed yeah, of this." <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm talking about when she first meets Lady Hidako and Hidako shows her like, "A." Hey. No no my my issue isn't that she was a bad liar. That's fine. My issue it's not even an issue. It's just something that I noticed that I think uh, brings the movie down again just a tad. Is uh, how dare you? <laughs> no. Is is that she be, she went from being a the world's worst liar to a very good believable liar <laughs> like with no uh just because the plot called for it basically i suppose but i don't think she was that bad of a liar it was only when it was about like her... she was pretty bad oh I feel like he the only thinks time... about he thinks about your assets every time at night <laughs> Instead of but that's face. what she, she was he was she was literally instructed to tell that exact thing to her and you you also no, have to factor no, in no, no. 
No, 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 she was not. Mm. That was, she was trying to convince her uh, of his goodness by saying that he thinks of her face every night, but she screwed up and said assets because that is literally what he said about her. Hmm. And it, 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 I don't know. It was just like, I just, uh, it, it was just something that stood out to me. I'll have to check on in on that, but I didn't see that vibe. Hmm. All right. Brandon, you got anything to add? Uh, I don't. I don't have anything. We can go around to ratings if we want. So, uh, Luke, what are you giving this? I always have to go first, huh? <laughs> this is really close between a seven and an eight. Hmm. I think I'll give it an eight. I enjoyed it. Jonathan? To me, this is really close between a six and a seven. But talking about it has pushed me towards a seven. Um, yeah, I was between seven and eight as well, and I'm, I'm going to give it an eight. Um, yeah, this is a... Is this now the second highest rated? No, it's the third highest rated movie that we've given. Huh. And I would say that it is a... You know, it's definitely one of those movies, though, that is not for everyone. If you're not into, like, sexual stuff or you mm. can't deal with sexual stuff, this is not for you. It did give us a and great we... gift, though. <laughs> that was an amazing <laughs> gift. I, you know, I, uh, when I saw that scene, I thought of that, too. Because, <laughs> like, they, they zoomed up on the hand. I was like, damn, that reminds me of that fucking meme. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Um, it's so good. Yeah, just for reference, uh, we're talking about the handshake in the like seventy-two movie Predator, <laughs> the first Predator movie, <laughs> uh, when when Schwarzenegger and Weathers clasp hands and talk shit to each other. Uh, somebody put their heads over their uh, heads while they're scissoring and cut in the dialogue from Predator, and it's very funny. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I mean, that's that's all we have. Do we want to talk about the? The meta layer of our our picks following a pattern thus far. Yeah, sure. I mean, we can before fun. before they change. Yeah, so I, I was looking through. I, I have a spreadsheet of data about the movies we picked because I'm a loser, and uh, we I, I looked through, and Jonathan has selected. Uh, he's picked two movies now, and he had told us another movie he was picking next, which may not be the case anymore. But all of them are uh, Oscar films. Uh, Luke has selected two films now and had a list of about five films um, that were in his to-be-picked list. All but one were foreign films. Um, and of the, the two movies that I have selected, both of them are from 2013. Um, I will not be selecting further movies from 2013, I don't think, but it was, <laughs> it was interesting that each of us had a trend. It is, uh, it is possible, though. It is a small sample size, though, so it's not like a good trend, but it was interesting to see nonetheless. I think it will be interesting to find out who gives the worst movies. Well, so far you have given the best movies. Oh, uh, you, I feel so you have oh, you have the first and third highest rated movie. I um, feel like Tenet shouldn't count. Jonathan has the Jonathan has the second best movie and the worst movie. Let's uh, go. <laughs> and I have uh, middle of the road stuff. I wonder where it equals out, but yeah. Yeah, it'll it'll continue. So Luke, your movies have been um your name was eight point six repeating and Handmaiden was seven point six repeating of our aggregate score. Uh Jonathan okay. Tenet Tenet got a five. <laughs> um and Moonlight got an eight. And then Snowpiercer was six point six repeating. because uh, Jonathan absolutely just fucking bodied Snowpiercer. I just didn't enjoy and that anymore. <laughs> Coherence was a seven. I just can't believe you you weren't piercing the snows. A four? Yeah, he, yeah, he low. gave it a four. I'm looking at that and I'm like Okay, so a five <laughs> is like I have no real opinion on it. I think that I had a slightly not great time watching that movie. It wasn't like oh that I was very much like, yeah, no, uh, this was kind of a waste of time, and that's kind of what gave it its score for me. 
so I'm definitely in the highest. I, I've rated things. Yeah, you have suggested the highest rated movies, and you also rate movies the highest. But here's the thing: take out Jonathan's four, and what does it look like? I think it's it's pretty close. Yeah, if you take out the four, Jonathan's pretty fucking similar to you. Although you are up there too, if you took away your four for Tenet. But I, I respect your Tenet four. <laughs> but also if we took out Tenet, because I didn't choose Tenet. Because... Yeah, then all the reviews are pretty high. It, it's interesting. We've all well, been we've been very similar in our ratings, except for Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer. Yeah, they're all within three, right? Yeah. I, your name is the next largest gap because you gave it a 10 and I gave it a 7. I'm sure That's there will be. I'm sure there'll be a movie that we like. I, I'm interested to see if there's a movie that the three of us all feel very different about. Like one of us sure really do. doesn't like it, one of us feels middle of the road, and one of us really likes it. That's sure. that's the movie I want to find. Yeah. And then <laughs> that, be... and then the episode will never air because it will be such an angry episode. It will be uh, so listen, long. No, you're wrong. That will be the episode that you have to air because that's what people want. They want the artist to screech and yell at each other. I don't. No. I don't think that's true. I, like I think people want conflict. I don't think they want screeching and yelling. I think they do. <laughs> we'll see. We, we're not gonna. We're not actually gonna read. Well, there might be some ring, depending on the movie. <laughs> yeah, if Jonathan picks one, and then he gives it like a ten. Like it, if we like if we watch two. if we watch Jurassic Park right now, and you gave it a five, and Jonathan gave it a two, I would re it both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it just hasn't aged all well, the CG. That's not even true. It's aged so well. In Jurassic Park, yeah, no, I agree. It's aged <laughs> brilliantly. I I don't know. Have you seen it lately? Yeah, the practical effects are great. Yeah. The practical effects are great. That's practical great. effects beat uh, CGI like yeah, but there's nine still out of ten there's times. Still CGI. Yeah, but the CGI isn't that egregious. Jurassic Park's a great movie. I think. When's the last time you watched it? Uh, like a year ago. <sighs> no, dude, I watched it a year ago too. And some of those scenes, like especially when they're all outside, it's pretty egregious. But I will say that doesn't matter because it holds a special place in my heart. It's a good ass move. Um, anyway, uh, the the meta session has ended. This episode is ready to end. Um, Jonathan, your pick is next, right? Yes. yes. Um, I, you have not cemented your pick. I have not. I actually, I, I I have now. Oh, okay. Do you want to say what it is? I am going to go ahead with Lost in Translation and uh, the Robert Downey Jr. Um, uh, Sherlock Holmes was going to be the one, but mm -hmm. I am going to go ahead with Lost in Translation just because it's been like two years where I've wanted to see it and I've just been pushing it off. It's time. It's time to just dive in. I think I think this is a movie we could have pretty different opinions on. Yeah, this I agree. Could be the one. This might be it. Um. So yeah, Lost in Translation next week. The uh, Bill Murray, Scarlett Johansson, I believe, are the two leads. I believe, and mm -hmm. um, young Scar Jo. And also young Bill Murray. And did win an Oscar. <laughs> so we're holding strong. At, at least one Brennan, Oscar, actually. Brennan, it's up to uh, you. Uh, to what, keep my trend? I'm not, I don't even know another movie from 2013 that I feel any sort of oh, way about. Oh, you do. I mean, there's a lot of bad movies from 2013. No, 2013 is one of the cinematic treasures. Hold on, let me... I'm going to look it up. 2013 movies. Let's look it up. Let's just do it on the podcast. Why not? You didn't like... Um, Oblivion, I heard, was bad. I didn't have a problem with Oblivion. Oh, hey, Her is from 2013. Oh, that's a great movie. Uh, yeah. The Bad Oz movie the is from 2013. Wall Street is actually a good movie, so... Oh, Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I do actually like that one. Oh, I do too. I've never seen it, but... Oh, that's a really good one. Put that's that on the Garden list. of Words. We could go with another. <laughs> you uh, can't. You can't put that one on your list. Put that one on my list. <laughs> uh, hold on. So we got the Garden of Words, which is a. Uh, another, did Secret Life of Walter Mitty win an Oscar? Hmm. Hold on. I'm looking up the Secret Life of Walter Mitty won an Oscar. There's no way. <laughs> or even got Probably nominated. Something. It just has to get uh, nominated. That's all. My thing is I can't like think of any movies that uh, I've seen that I like felt like some sort of way about without it being like commonly known, except for Walter Mitty. That was one that I remember liking a lot. 
It's a good movie. It really is. All right, what a, about like, it makes you Hustle? feel so good. Uh, the song from God, I Arcade Fire. Like, yeah, step the, up. Uh, wake up. I think. Wake up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. Yeah. It's a good. One. It is a dank song. I could listen to that song on repeat for very. It's long. used well in the movie too. Yeah, what so about yeah, American like, Hustle though? There's that so many times. Oscar, there's so many times. Movies, there's so many times where movies just kind of uh, put uh, songs in to try to make you feel something, but the way that that song was used, like mm-hmm. I, mean, I actually think like that's how that song is like. Okay. The way it feels that well. song is not like it. It can never be used in a way that's upsetting. That uh, that uh, about time movie you talked about is also 2013. That that is a good movie. Hey, that's not an Oscar movie. About time. Are you sure? You've been wrong before. No, it won an Oscar. You're you're kidding. Um, what what are the Oscars actually called? They're called like the Academy Awards or some shit. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I don't, th- I don't think. I don't think about Gravity time. Gravity came out in 2013. What do you think about that movie? Not a good uh, movie, but I prefer it to Interstellar. Really? Yeah, that's okay. that's that's my that's my one uh, spicy opinion that people really don't like to hear about those movies. Is like I I don't think either I don't like either movie, but I think Wait, Gravity's better. Isn't one of the things that you're super against Interstellar about is the way that it handled its female protagonist, but yet Gravity is way fucking worse. Um, but in Gravity, she's dumb the whole time. <laughs> okay. They're at least consistently bad. <clears throat> okay, here's one. Interstellar was inconsistent, in my opinion. Before we get on a tangent here. Yeah, we were trying to end this episode. 2013. <laughs> which I have not seen. I've only heard bad things about. Mm. And then also uh, Evil Dead, the remake, which I actually enjoyed. I haven't I seen that. pretty good. Um, that came out in 2013 as well. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to be picking 2013 movies. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to. This I, is your, I don't this have is to. Your niche. I, I'm. I'm. It looks like it will be watching. Very Riddick. in control. I do love Riddick. Or wait, actually, hold on. Wait. wait. Is Riddick the middle one or is Riddick the third one? I think it's the last one. It's the third one. Yeah. So Riddick's good. The middle one is. Eh. Chronicles of Riddick. Pacific Rim came out in 2013. I still haven't seen Pacific Rim. It's good. Anyway, this doesn't need to be happening on the podcast. We can end this. Um, thanks for listening. Next week will be Lost in Translation, a movie that I'm not excited to watch. Uh, <laughs> we'll do the cha-cha slide. And after that, it, is it my pick? It is. Ooh. All right. Um, so, yeah, thanks, thanks for listening. See you next time. Peace. All right.